Hey, this is Steve from MyOtherCareer.wordpress.com, and today I wanted to take advantage of a new feature in Apple OS 10.6 that allows me to capture screen recordings so I can show some people what Final Draft and Celts look like in a computer. So let's get right down to business. Like I covered in my Introduction to Screenwriting video, Final Draft is pretty much the industry standard, as it shows on its website, in screenwriting software. You really can't go wrong having this piece of software. The downside is it can cost 250 bucks to get started. Plus side, you can get a free demo to give it a trial run if you want. And I would encourage you to do so. It doesn't hurt. It's free. And um, you can really find out if this is the type of thing that you like to do or not. I think it's 30 days, but you can get more information by going to their website and checking it out yourself. So without further ado, let's fire up Final Draft. And when it opens up, it opens right to an untitled screenplay and a blank page. Now, if you're writing something and you go to File, Open Recent, or in Windows, however other you get to it, it'll list everything you've been working on. So you can go ahead and open those up and, and take a look and continue where you've left off. But it'll automatically format to a brand new screenplay. Now, one of the cool things about Final Draft, unlike Microsoft Word and other word processing programs, is it's built specifically for screenwriting which means it has tools and utilities built into it to help you write faster and more efficiently so you don't have to worry about macros and formatting and spacing issues and all that stuff. It knows how things are supposed to look and it does its best to make sure it looks that way. So for example, if I want to start a scene, I'm going to pull a slug line. Slug lines can be written one of three ways, interior, exterior, or interior, exterior. Let's start with an interior. All I have to do is type I right off the bat and it knows this is a slug line. It's interior, so it's going to default to that. Or maybe it thinks I mean interior, exterior, so it gives me that option in the menu too. I don't even have to finish writing it. All I can do is hit enter, and it puts it there for me. Now I can give the scene a heading name, and what time of day it is. Day? Oh, it already knows. Day. N for night? It already knows. Night. So I don't even have to finish typing. I can just hit enter. I'm good to go. All right. It'll immediately default the next line to an action or a description text, which is basically prose. So I'm going to give it a brief description. And it's good to go. Now if I hit return, it's going to think I'm going to continue writing in action or description dialog or prose until I tell it otherwise. How do I tell it otherwise? Well, the way you do that and go from action to the next logical step, which is dialog, is I just hit the tab. It'll automatically go to where uh, in the margins, dialog or a name for dialog would start. And all I have to do is type in the person's name. If I hit enter, it knows the next thing I'm likely to do is start typing that person's dialog. And so it moves to where it's supposed to go. Uh, did I spell useful right? Oh well. Okay, now if I hit enter again, it thinks I'm going to go back to action. Unless. When I hit enter, I hit tab and put somebody else's name. Okay, now I have two people here, right? I have a conversation going. Final Draft knows this is a conversation. So when I hit enter this time, and I hit tab, it's going to go back to my name because it says, hey, St Bob just talked. Steve is probably the next person to talk. So it automatically formats that stuff for you. So when you're writing back and forth dialogue, you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. Every time you hit enter, it'll default to an action or a description sequence or text. And you just can keep tinkering with tab and when you need to go back into dialogue. It's really nice. Or if I'm talking and say Steve says, he does an action and then he starts talking again. It's automatically going to put continue there to know that this is the same part of dialogue. Uh, this is formatting again. You don't have to worry about it. Now, this is a real brief overview, so don't take this as a Bible or anything in-depth as far as instructional. I just wanted to give you an introduction to this. Now, there are a couple other features in uh, a couple other tools that Final Draft has built into it that a lot of people find really useful, myself included. And I'm going to show you the most, well, the one I think is the most important. When you go to View in the menu, there is Index Card Summary and Index Card Script. I'm going to start out with the summary. Summary is basically having 3 by 5 index cards. But the neat thing is, is I can write whatever I want here as a note for the scene. And I can have the headline of the scene or the slug line. And if I want to add another card, oops,
Now, I've got two little note cards here. If I go back and view the script, suddenly that extra scene and that note card I put in is there. It puts it there for you. Now, if I go back to the summary view and I move those cards back around, <coughs> excuse me, go back to page view, it'll automatically move that scene to the top. I really like using this. It's really a neat way to, to build out a script uh, and have it format a lot of that stuff for you ahead of time. Now, in summary view, this stuff is not included in the script. What I write here will never make it over to the script. However, if I go to index card script view, those same note cards I have will now be in script view. Anything I write here can show up. I'm sorry, anything written in the script will show up here. So this would allow me to view the script and then move the scenes around uh, in context to what actually shows up in the scene, which is nice. Now, I'm kind of running out of the amount of time I wanted to show here uh, for Final Draft, so I'm going to move on. But download the free trial and give it a whirl for yourself. This is what it looks like. This is how easy it is to use. Um, it won't take you too long to pick it up, and uh, and I really uh, I really like using it. I do all my writing on it, and uh, and it's fun. But let's say you don't have $249. What's my other option? Well, I talked about a piece of software called CELTS. And you can go get to CELTS by going to CELTS.com. And as you can see, it's available for Windows, Mac, Linux, and the EE PC version of Linux, and just about every language manageable. It's free. I believe it's open source. So download it and give it a whirl. It works differently than Final Draft. Uh, first thing you'll notice, it doesn't open to a blank page. It's built to allow you to do a bunch of things, theater, audio plays, storyboards, comic book, text. But I'm only interested in the film, and so that's all I'm going to show you today. Now, you can see the interface is drastically different than Final Draft. There's a lot more going on in the page. I'm not overly familiar with all of this stuff, so I can't give you a whole lot of detail. But it works more or less the same way. Now, you'll see it'll go down to Dialog, or uh, to Action. If I tab over, it automatically formats me correctly for um, a character. Okay. And it'll save names, it'll save scene headings. So writing is, is pretty much the same way as, uh, as Final Draft. It also has index cards that work in a very similar fashion. The only problem is that um, if you don't write the index cards here, they, they don't carry over. Um, but a cool thing is that you can format these index cards so that they will uh, show up into different plot points. So say this is this scene is part of plot A, I can color code them so I know what scenes correspond to what, what subplots or main plots I have going on. I do use CELTS to kind of build out my 3x5 index cards and take a real high level view, but I've not gotten into it too much for writing just because I like how Final Draft moves and I like the, uh, the way Final Draft operates a little better. But if you just want to try out screenwriting and you don't want to lay down $249 to get Final Draft, CELTS is a good way to get started. I would encourage you to check it out. Like I've said, it's free. Um, and I can't really give you huge tutorials on it. That's not the point of this video. It's to just introduce you to the software. But you can't really go wrong because, like I've said, it's free. Try it out. Give it a whirl. You might, you know, you might find it terrible, but, you know, what are you going to do? It's free. At least you didn't lose any money on it. So, um Back on the tutorial standpoint, if you do download Final Draft and you want a little more information on how to use it, if you go to YouTube and you just type in Final Draft Tutorial, you're going to get all sorts of videos. I'm going to show you how to use all sorts of features in Final Draft, a lot better than I went over here. But my point in the video wasn't to teach you how to use the software, it was to just introduce you to the software. So, go ahead, download either of these, give them a whirl, start writing. Like I said, my goal is not to teach you how to write. It's to just get you started. Hopefully get you interested in it. And hopefully one day you'll, you know, write the next E.T. Or write the next um, Inglorious Bastards. You know, maybe you'll be the next Tarantino. Who knows? But either way, if you make it, you'll be entertaining all of us. So it's a win-win for everybody. So thanks for stopping by. Hopefully you found this, this video entertaining. I'll be doing some more of these uh, screen recordings from time to time as I, as I come up with ideas. But once again, this is Steve for myothercareer.wordpress.com. Keep writing. Enjoy Labor Day weekend.